Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Post Productions. And today we are going to be talking about the classic film Beetlejuice. I'm considering it Beetlejuice week this week since we have the second film coming out. Uh, we very recently watched it again. I've seen it many times before. But Seamus, this is your first time seeing the original Beetlejuice. Is that correct? That's right, man. That's correct. The juice is loose. This the, week. <laughs> the juice is loose, and it's it's a good week because I really like these movies. Spoiler alert, I guess for the second one, but I really really enjoy the first film. I've seen it many many times. I I watched it about I think it was like two years ago because I didn't grow up with it. Because mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil myself right now. I'm not a huge Tim Burton fan. Like mm -hmm. I, we've talked about this many times. Like I like his movies but i don't love them you know i've never really had a tim burton movie where i'm like yes i love this the only one that it has ever been like that is beetlejuice for me and everything else is like it's okay besides dumbo that shit was awful uh, <laughs> it's not my hate list it's not the top of it i'm boring but anyways but no i th i really think this movie is something special and i really enjoyed it after rewatch but I think the most uh, interesting thing to talk about is, Seamus, your opinion. Coming from a new standard, from someone who had never seen it before, I want to hear your opinion and tell all the good old people at home. I'm not. Put, I'm trying to not put you on the spot, but no, I am putting you on the spot. No, that's okay. Uh, yeah, so we watched it the other day for the first time. Um, I'll admit, at the time, I was very tired. Uh, and copium. I it's felt, copium. It's copium. Yeah. <laughs> I felt, I won't lie, I felt kind of lukewarm on it at first. I I on first watch I'd give it like six out of ten. I I liked Michael Keaton. I like Winona Ryder a lot. I liked the practical effects. I found the humor was kind of miss. I don't know, hit and miss. I don't get it. There's some good parts. Some parts I was like, I don't know. I I wasn't just. I couldn't fully get into it. I don't think. I don't. I don't know what my problem was. I don't know. <laughs> just being the fun police or whatever. Um, revisit it again this morning after seeing the second one. And I, I'd probably bump it up to a seven. It's a it's a yeah. fun movie. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun movie. It's really good. And I think this episode too, we'll be able to just talk fully about spoilers too. So yeah, I mean the movie's like how old? Is it thirty six mm -hmm. years old? Is that, yeah, is that what I read. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So anyone saying you spoiled the movie, you had thirty six years. Watch it. Go home. <laughs> Click off and like the video, of course. But you had thirty six years to watch it, so we're gonna talk about spoilers because, like, honestly. This movie is just such a classic. I feel like who hasn't really seen this movie? I don't even feel like we need to explain what this movie is. Nah. It's just great. But I, I wanted to ask you, Seamus, because I thought this was crazy on rewatch. How the hell did they make this movie PG? How was it PG? <laughs> no idea. <I> <laughs> that, yeah, that's kind of wild, actually. Yeah. There's, there's an F-bomb, isn't there? Oh, there's a lot of it. There's like a couple, isn't there? Yeah, more than one. I swear, there's there's one where he explicitly says "fuck" though, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like, improvised as well. It wasn't even intentional. I don't even understand because I think with like the second Indiana Jones movie, that's when PG thirteen came out. Yeah, and I think with PG thirteen, I think wasn't it you're allowed one f bomb? I think it's still one f bomb. It's still one f bomb. I'm pretty sure. It's yeah. So how did this get PG? <laughs> I think this came out after Indiana Jones too. I think it did. So, I could be wrong about that, but I, I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, I I have no idea, and like, there's a lot of sexual innuendos there's and a lot of like gore. and unaliving yourself, like a lot of references yeah. to that. Like, there's one part where they go like to the uh, the person behind the desk, and she implies that like she slit her wrists, and that's how she died. And then they just laugh about it, like, oh, that's that's funny. It's like that's dark. It's very, that's dark. very dark. Or when uh, Li or uh, Lydia is like writing a literal like suicide note. It's like. What the fuck? What the hell is going on? But it feels so weird because it feels like it shouldn't work. Because honestly, like, it's an extremely dark, but it's also like, it's a kid's movie. So yeah. like, it's this weird pairing that shouldn't really work, but it does. Like, it really does work. But like, I, it took me off guard too. Because I remember I watched this a bit ago and I kind of noticed it back. But like, when we really sat down and like analyzed, I'm like, that is very very on another level just screwed up in so many levels dude yeah there's some there's some morbid shit going on in this movie man. yeah which i will say though like what some of it though is just seeing how people have died i thought that was like one of the funniest parts of the that, movie. that's my favorite probably my favorite part besides michael keaton of both of them oh yeah just seeing that i, I think that's hilarious I love, I love the guy when they're all sitting at, waiting at the waiting room and he's like made a like char he's like completely burnt he's like you want a cigarette it's pure carbon. Like, 
Yeah. I was like, that's great. <laughs> it's just a lot of really good, like, visual gags I found, like, that are really, really good, which we will talk about more in the second one, too. But, like, here, just, I think Tim Burton, I think this is one of his best films in terms of just, like, style, I think. Yeah. Like, there's just so much to like in this movie. He lets, his, he lets his freak flag fly, uh, but it works. Freak flag. Yeah, bro. He gets, <laughs> he gets freaky with it, man. It's, it's true. It's, like, very tim burton yeah ask but it works here. but it's good like yeah. and, it, and i'm not just saying that I'm, I'm sorry any tim burton fan out there i did not mean to just piss you off by saying it's good not implying that anything else he made is good i'm just saying is that it is it's prime craft here like mm. it's great here and it really adds to the world building as well and the cinematography like everything to do with that it's just fantastic honestly yeah. it's a really fun concept too oh like, yeah i, I, I love, love the plot the idea. yeah and then like, like go into the afterlife and they're just being this like giant queue meeting <laughs> and it's like going to the dmv or something yeah shit, and it's just like and there's like bio exorcists to, like help you get people out of your house that's yeah, hilarious yeah, it's, it's a cool it's a cool concept yeah it really is and yeah. i and i even just love the plot as well like i think it's like it's simple but it's just great like a couple dies someone moves into their house they want to get the person out so they have to call bio exorcist to get it out and shit goes from there that's great yeah like you don't get plots like that anymore that are just like real original like that like it's just pure creativity, and it just—I think that's why I love it so much. Is how crazy, but simple it is. Like it feels grounded in a way, but it's still like you know, it's obviously not. Like it's very weird, but it just works. Like it just everything works for me. And the peak of that is Michael Keaton. Oh. Like oh my god, he, he's even better after watching it again. <laughs> dude, he's so he's so good. Oh my god, so dude. much charisma. Right? No, bro's a total creeper. But... <laughs> He, I don't know. He pulls it off. It's a delicate balance. Yeah, it's a delicate balance from like coming off as unlikable and then just being a, like just a weirdo. But no, like he is very likable. You do acknowledge that he's not a great guy. He's fucking weird. But like, it's just he's so entertaining to a point where you're like, I really do not even care. No. Like, he's just so funny, dude. There are so many fucking good jokes of them. And I love just like how half of his lines are just all improvised. And I'm pretty sure it's e more than half, to be honest. I don't know how he came up with that stuff off the top of his head. <laughs> I that's, don't know that's either. Wild. Yeah, just like on the spot too. He's like underrated. Yeah. Oh, under. He's such an underrated actor. Oh, like, I agree. There's a comedy drama. Yeah, like he's great at doing character work. He's great at doing dramatic performances. Mm -hmm. We need more Michael Keaton. We do more Absolutely. late career Michael Keaton besides fucking The Flash. So we need, please, man. What do you mean? The Flash was great. <laughs> One of the rare L's I will take on my channel, giving that movie an, a six. You gave it a six? I'm pretty sure I gave it a six. And if, <laughs> hey, no! Don't attack you. Don't attack me, dude. I'm sorry. It was it was a mistake. It was just for laughs. It was just for laughs, dude. It was for gags. It was just for gaps. Laughs and giggles. Laughs and giggles. <laughs> don't hurt me. But no, I totally agree. Like, he's at his prime here, and he's just perfect. Like, I absolutely love it, and I love the design of the character as well. Like, just so iconic. Yeah. Just so recognizable. And it's like, you could just see, like, a million miles. Like, if you were to look back, like, looking back, you can definitely tell why, like, this became such a big thing, you know? Yeah. Like, every Halloween you see it, like, at all the freaking like, the Spencers and stuff, you just see it all over the place. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Just instantly iconic. Like, instantly. Like for a certain audience, it really resonated with them. Exactly. Like, yeah. kind of like, I don't know, you can almost, like, picture, like, what you're... A uh, Beetlejuice fan would look like. Yeah, oh my. You just know it's like they're yes. eating this shit up. Like, oh my god, yes. But honestly, how could you not? Because I think the style is just so crazy and great that honestly. But no, I think like Michael Keaton really pushed this character into like one of the most recognizable characters ever. Yeah. Honestly, like there's very few characters I think someone will just look at and just know the name instantly. And I think I I would say pretty much most people would look at Beetlejuice and go, yeah, it's, it's Beetlejuice, yeah. and not even watch the movie. They're just like, yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, How do you true. not know who that is? It's just true, yeah. Yeah, I feel like people would know who Beetlejuice is more than a freaking. Well, I was gonna say Indiana Jones. Maybe that's not true, but there are other people I'm sure yeah. that uh, I, he, I'm sure <laughs> Beetlejuice is up there. In terms oh yeah, of, like, most recognizable characters. Like, I, would, I would agree with the suit and everything, man, and the yeah. crazy hair. Like that's dude, like, kind of. No, I'm not gonna say it. Why you say it? I was gonna say it's kind of bad though. Kind of yeah. <laughs> I it was funny, we went and watched uh Beetlejuice too, and I won't stay too long on it, I won't spoil anything. But I did hear someone say that. 
like Come closer to, like the beginning. <laughs> Someone said, "Hey, why are you here?" And he goes, "Oh, I don't know. I think my kit was kind of bad." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, really?" I didn't say anything because I was like, "I'm kind of uncomfortable now." <laughs> what are you into? That's weird. Hey, Rose into dead people. I don't like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a weird thought. Mm. That's a kind of kind of icky. Kind of itch. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that uh, really caught me off guard with this movie seeing it for the first time was the music too. Yeah, I did not expect that like genre and style no. of music to be in a movie like this. Like it was like what? yeah. At first, it feels very off. Yeah, doesn't it? But I think that's kind of was the point, you know, because everything's supposed to be like random. Yeah, it's supposed to be like unpredictable, and I think just that just adds to it. And that's personally why I just love. I eat it up. Like, I actually, it's funny, I watched it again. We watched it this week sometime, uh, viewer. I think it was, like, what, Monday? Something yeah, like that. Yeah. I watched it again with my mom, and she thought the scene where they were all, like, dancing to the one song, she thought it was freaking hilarious. She was cry laughing. Oh, really? Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. And, like, I still think it's great, and I think it's just, that's the point. It's just supposed to be, like, such a subversion where it's just funny. It's yeah. just funny. I was I was also really surprised by the worms. <laughs> Like oh, the sand in there for a second. <laughs> like, whoa. It's, it's out there. Yeah. And then they never really explain, like, what it is. Well, they say what it is, but, like, the area. They're just like, what is this? No one ever says anything about it. It's just like, mm, who cares? <laughs> We're just doing it. It's, it's just random to be to be random, but it's good random. Because yeah. it's like, it feels like it's building to something and world building. And totally. Yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta accept it. Yeah, It's strange and some stuff will happen and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, and you just... It's like, part of the joy of Exactly. It's just shutting your brain off and just going, yep, this is this this all makes sense. <laughs> this, this all makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> but no, like, yeah, I love all that. I really eat up the world building in this movie and the afterlife. That, like, that's my favorite part. It's just that. Which I wish we got more of in this movie, but we will talk about in the next video. Mm. Because we will be talking about Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, which is the sequel, which we'll have a lot more to say about that sort of stuff. But for now... I know you've already kind of said you're going to give it a seven. Mm. Uh, I think I will go, I'm going to go a little bit higher for my ranking. Yeah. I still think it's like an 8.5, maybe pushing a nine. Like I love really? this movie. No. I don't really do. It's, like... it, it's one of those classic ones I could just watch on loop and I will always find funny. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm like I said, I'm not even Tim Burton guy, but I think this one's great. Like, I love this one. It's great. No, that's and, good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I like to have those movies you can just put on. Oh, yeah. Like any time and just watch over and over. And it's like, you still enjoy it. Like, you yeah. don't really get tired of it, you know? Oh, it's yeah. It's definitely in the library of, like, freaking what? Evil Dead 2. Most Marvel movies except the Marvels. Uh, <laughs> and, like, probably the Indiana Jones. Like, all of those ones. It's just one you can throw on. I love it. It's yeah. great. And then you watch it more intensely. And it's just... You pick up on so much, like, little details. It's just... It's great. It's peak. I, I'm going to say it right now. It's peak cinema. I'm going to say peak it right cinema. now. And if it's not peak cinema, it's uh, peak creativity. Yeah. I will say. That's valid. Yeah. That's valid. 100%. Peak cinema stamp. Peak cinema. Gavin. I like I, it. I get, we should just do that for now. Whenever we like something like that. Peak cinema. Peak cinema. Peak cinema. <laughs> peak cinema. We show the picture of Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yes. yes be I great. Like I, think, I think we should do that moving forward. Agreed. Well, so, so peak peak cinema criteria: what nine or a ten out of ten? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or it's like so bad that it's funny. Okay. Because you know, Martin Scorsese, you know, he would he would like he would like a really bad movie, but Marvel movies, no. Dude, the theme like, parks. Yeah, you know, the theme parks, eh? How? <laughs> I, I'm just saying that's what he said. That's what he I know. Said. I know. <laughs> I'm joking, by the way, viewer. I know what he said, and I just cool. I don't really. I do not care. This guy wouldn't go watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Dude. That is not true. Yeah. That is not this true. Is so off topic for this episode, but yeah, I tried to convince him to go. This is not true. Twice. He wouldn't see me once. You went twice? I saw it twice. You saw it six hours worth I of Killers? Oh my god. I watched it once. Bro, I, I was too Bro, busy. Tick TikTok attention span. This is not you need true. Subway Surfers. I, I do need. need... To release it with the Subway Surfers gameplay at the bottom. Yeah, maybe that's why fucking Rebel Moon was so bad. I just needed Subway Surfers. That solves everything. Farming, farming simulator. Farming. No, don't even get me started on that. Fucking farming. Maybe I'll be another another episode. You want me to force you to watch Rebel Moon? 
Dude, we could do like a oh fuck, just disastrously shit on it, just just tear it apart. Then all the Zack Snyder fans will hate me, though. That's okay. Is that okay? <laughs> That's okay. Bro. They'll all be very angry at me. They they will learn to cope. They'll get over it. They'll learn to cope. I don't think they will. Yeah, probably. I don't think they will. Man, <laughs> just before we get too off topic. Yeah, before we, I sentence my fate to the Zack Snyder fans. <laughs> if you like this episode, make sure to like and subscribe down below. We'll be coming at you pretty soon with the next episode on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which will be the sequel. Probably come out next few days. But with that, if you like this video, again, like and subscribe, and thank you for listening. Thanks, guys.